Welcome into the show. Happy Thursday, everybody. You're watching Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. Chase Sr. here with you. Thanks for hanging out here with me. We have a loaded show coming your way here on the Eagles Now Rundown. Did you see that week one performance for Kirk Cousins against the Pittsburgh Steelers? Atlanta gave him $100 million in guaranteed money, and some fans are asking for him to get benched in favor of Michael Penix. So Atlanta getting some terrible news already and terrible returns on the Cousins front early. I'm going to dissect and break down the Eagles' biggest worry against the Atlanta Falcons, and then we're going to do a deep dive. Fascinating numbers, taking a look at Devontae Smith's usage against the Green Bay Packers and how offensive coordinator Kellen Moore might utilize him to maximize him for the rest of the year. First, let's begin with this. Where is your level of confidence with the Birds going into Monday Night Football? If you think the Eagles will beat the Falcons at Lincoln Financial Field, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. If you're not confident in an Eagles win and you think they're going to lose, I want you to explain why and show me that you know ball. What a weird offseason for the Atlanta Falcons. They gave Kirk Cousins $100 million in guaranteed money coming off a torn Achilles that he suffered last year with the Minnesota Vikings. Unfortunate for him because after the Vikings overcame that slow start, they started to find their groove, and Kirk Cousins was playing some of the best football of his NFL career. And he's always been a quarterback who's been able to put up really impressive statistics. And after the Atlanta Falcons found their franchise quarterback, moving off of Desmond Ritter, who was terrible for Atlanta, they drafted a 24-year-old rookie in Michael Penix at 8 overall. So with the 8th overall pick, after paying Kirk Cousins a bag, they drafted an older rookie in Michael Penix. And last year at Washington, I really liked the player. He has really good arm strength. He throws with great anticipation. That boundary ball it is precise. I love how he throws the back shoulder ball. Michael Penix is a good player, but he's older, and you paid Kirk Cousins all that money. And after how Cousins played against one of the top defenses in the NFL, you have Falcons fans going into week two who are already calling for Cousins to get benched. And I'll say you this, bad businesses, they don't have a plan. They don't have foresight. They don't have a feel. They don't have awareness. Bad football teams and poorly run organizations, they don't have a plan either. And it doesn't seem as though the Atlanta Falcons have a plan at the most important position in all of sports. And the Falcons' game plan against the Pittsburgh Steelers was not good. It was head-scratching, and it didn't make any sense at all. Now, we talked about some of this during our Eagles Falcons preview. That video is up on the channel. It's popping. Be sure to check it out. But then some further data here released from Field Yates of ESPN in the aftermath of that Falcons defeat to Pittsburgh at home. The Falcons were in the pistol formation or in shotgun on 96% of their snaps on Sunday in week one. Of the 22 snaps out of the shotgun, the, Val the Falcons had zero design runs. And of the 26 snaps out of the pistol, the Falcons ran the ball on 81% of their plays. So some context there, they didn't have a plan. The game plan didn't make a lot of sense. And with what they did, it was highly predictable. But was there a reason for this? We'll dive into that here coming up in just a moment. The raw numbers for Kirk Cousins, he was 16 of 26. He looked indecisive. He looked skittish in the pocket. He was a little bit inaccurate. Only threw for 155 yards, a touchdown, two interceptions. He did fumble as well. T.J. Watt was dominating that game off the edge for Pittsburgh. Cousins had a 28.9 QBR in his Falcons debut and a quarterback rating of only 59. The lone touchdown throw that he did have was to the left side of the field, and he was able to spread the ball out. The green dots are completions. The blue streak and dot, touchdown. The white dot, incompletions. Red, interceptions. Both of them coming on that left side of the field. And then, of course, you see the line of scrimmage there. And a lot of these throws, kind of in that short, intermediate area, he did have that long ball, 
But Kirk Cousins clearly didn't look to be himself. And of course, he's coming off the torn Achilles, so you have to give him a cushion. You have to give him some wiggle room. But when you watch the tape, and when I was watching that game live, I'm saying, Kirk Cousins looks like a statue. Kirk Cousins is clearly not healthy. He's very limited, and that was evidenced by his lack of movement, and he's never really been an athletic or mobile quarterback, as well as the play calling. And how is that going to change from last week to this week? Raheem Morris is the new head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. He comes over from the Rams. He brought Zach Robinson, who comes over from the Rams as well. And you're expecting to see a Sean McVay offensive attack. Now, Sean McVay offenses operate out of the pistol a lot more now as compared to what they used to do, the pistol formation, quarterback in the shotgun, running back right behind him. But to see that offense as predictable as it was, it was head-scratching. And because Cousins can't move and he doesn't have a lot of confidence or strength, in driving the football downfield. I think the game plan for Atlanta through the air, look out for the quick throws if you're Philadelphia. Also look out for the Falcons looking to establish the running game with B. John Robinson. Now this is an Atlanta team that has a very good dual threat running back attack. But coming up here in just a moment, I'm going to explain why the Eagles' biggest worry against the Atlanta Falcons is containing and stopping the run, especially B. John Robinson. Stay tuned for that. But first, I want to give a shout-out to our sponsor, and that is Game Time. If you want to go to an Eagles game, another football game, whether that be college or pro, or you like music like me, you want to go to a concert, you like to laugh and you want to go to a comedy show, I love going to comedy shows, or you want to go to a theater event like the Blue Man Group or a show on Broadway, be sure to download the Game Time app. With Game Time, you can get the best seats at the lowest price guaranteed. And what's interesting about the Game Time app and awesome is that prices drop as the event gets closer. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive, and there are a couple of features that I really like within the Game Time app. By the way, plenty of tickets available if you want to go to Eagles Falcons on Monday Night Football, if you want to see the Eagles on the road. But Game Time Picks Curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy shows, and theater. I suggest that you toggle the all in feature. Therefore, you can see your total up front. How many times are you on other ticketing apps which are inferior to Game Time? and they hit you with those surprise fees at checkout. It's ridiculous. I also like how you can see that view from your seat so you see the vantage point and the price point. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time, download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem that code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. Let's shift to this. The Philadelphia Eagles' biggest concern and worry against the Atlanta Falcons on Monday night, stopping the ground game. Led by B. John Robinson, but Atlanta also has a really good backup running back in Tyler Algier. And B. John Robinson, as we know, a really gifted player who at Texas was one of the best dual threat backs that we've seen at the college level over the last several years. He can slice and dice you in between the tackles, getting out to the edge. He has the speed and the elusiveness to do that. He has the short area quickness and burst to make you miss. He has really good vision and patience, and he is a home run threat anytime that he can get his hands on the football. And the Eagles in week one against the Green Bay Packers to start that game in Brazil, they were stout and physical in stopping the Packers' running attack. But then, after recess, Green Bay in that third quarter really made an adjustment with Josh Jacobs, their prized free agent acquisition. And you could tell they really wanted to establish the run in order to set up the pass for Jordan Love. And in that third quarter, Josh Jacobs ran crazy. He ran for more than 70 yards in that third quarter alone, and Philadelphia gave up 84 rushing yards in the second half alone to Josh Jacobs. So with Kirk Cousins limited in this game, 
And him looking as if he's a statue coming off that torn Achilles, very limited coming off that injury because he's never been a good mover in the pocket and he doesn't have a lot of confidence to put velocity behind the football and because the Falcons' play calling is very predictable because they know that Cousins can't do much, they're going to run the football a lot. And I think they're going to feed B. John Robinson in this game. They're going to give Tyler Algier a lot of carries as well. It's one of the best dual threat running back duos in the National Football League that not a lot of people know about because last year Arthur Smith really struggled in calling the offense for Atlanta. And a lot of people just don't realize in general that Tyler Algier is a really quality player. Bijan against Pittsburgh, I don't think Atlanta ran the ball enough. Only 18 carries, 68 yards, and a lot of those runs were out of the pistol. So over time, the Pittsburgh Steelers, who have one of the best defenses in the National Football League, knew what was coming, yet Bijan Robinson only got 18 carries. I would have featured him more, and Atlanta has to know that Kirk Cousins isn't 100% yet. Bijan's rookie year, it was a good rookie campaign for him. 214 carries, 976 yards, 4.6 yards per pop, four touchdowns on the ground, four touchdowns in the air as well. And then he also added 58 catches for 487 yards. So again, going back to Cousins being limited, this is an opportunity for this Eagles pass rush to get after Kirk Cousins, muddy the pocket, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, I want to see you have a big game. Nolan Smith, Brandon Graham, Josh Sweat, Bryce Huff, where are you? It is time to get that pass rush going. There's no more excuses for playing on a slippery surface like you had to play on in Brazil. Thanks, NFL. You have a quarterback who can't move. He's a statue in the pocket. They're going to try to get rid of the ball very quickly to negate that pass rush. But what's another way to do that? Swing passes, screen passes to B. John Robinson. So Atlanta going to try to feed B. John Robinson the football a lot. It's the biggest concern that the Eagles have to look out for. Next up here on the show, Devontae Smith's usage in week one against the Green Bay Packers was pretty telling. And it could be a sign of things to come for this Philadelphia offensive attack under Kellen Moore this upcoming season. And Kellen Moore discussed... What makes Smitty so dangerous out of the slot? We'll hear from more coming up here just around the corner. Devontae Smith against the Packers. 54.1% of his snaps were out of the slot. Last year, he only lined up out of the slot 24.3% of the time. Offensive malpractice to not put him in a position to succeed. And it also helps out Jalen Hurts because Philadelphia in general a year ago barely targeted the middle area of the field. And in the last two years, Devontae Smith ranked seventh in yards per route run from the slot. He just hasn't had a lot of opportunities to run routes out of the slot, especially last year, 24.3%. Here's what Kellen Moore had to say about Devontae Smith being utilized from the inside. Yeah, I think he just does an excellent job. He's got great spatial awareness, a great feel for the game. I think when you play inside as a receiver, there's a lot more variables. There's a nickel on top of you, but there's a safety. There's linebackers. You've got to have the awareness to kind of see and have great spatial awareness to recognize all those aspects and see how those moving pieces change the picture for you. So I think he did an excellent job finding space in the zone a couple of times. Devontae Smith is a really special player. Devontae Smith is also a very smart football player. So you're putting a player who's going to help you exploit mismatches against slot nickel corners, linebackers, who also can thrive there because he does have that spatial awareness and recognition, and he understands what the defense is doing. A lot of you are probably asking, Chase, you talked about his slot alignment last year. How about for his entire career? Well, in 2021... When he was the Eagles' number one wideout, he only ran 105 routes out of the slot on 982 snaps, 10.7% of the time. Year two, with the arrival of A.J. Brown, that doubled to 21%. Not nearly enough. Last year, you look at the numbers there, and then against the Packers, 53.9%. And it's not only the utilization of Smitty out of the slot, 
It's using him as the pre-snap motion man as well. And he had a great game, I thought, in week one against Green Bay. Couple of big catches, that one on fourth and three. He's still very explosive. And this is working off the heels of him having an excellent training camp for Philadelphia and being one of the breakout stars for the Eagles in the lead up to the 2024 campaign. To summarize all of this, this is just smart coaching and smart offensive football. And this is what the Eagles lacked last year. They didn't have a plan. The game planning was poor. They didn't have answers against the blitz. They were last in pre-snap motion. And now when you watch this Kellen Moore offense, it looks as though it's a completely different game. And the job of a coach is to put their players in a position to succeed and putting Devontae Smith in the slot is a way to do that. If you enjoyed today's show, give me a real one down in the comment section. As always, I really appreciate everybody for supporting the program here. We will be live on Monday night for our Eagles-Falcons watch party. We did 300,000 views in week one against the Green Bay Packers. We're expecting massive numbers once again. And we're closing in on 100,000 subscribers. So if you're looking for Eagles shows every single day, be sure to hit that sub button. Thank you.